Hey everyone, this is Casey with C. Reeves Makes. I recently had a customer contact me in regards to a basic wall shelf, but it had a catch. It needed to have a removable bar that could hold running metals. Another challenge was that we wanted hidden features for how the rod was held in place. Stick around to see how we did it. After talking to the customer about the build, I quickly thought that this would be another great project for the Craig ACS. This is a basic build and I wanted to see if I could make the entire thing with this system. The only other tools I would need were a drill, some clamps, and a pocket hole jig. The system stores in a vertical rolling fashion and in a matter of seconds can be set up for the task at hand. I got out the dust collector cart and hooked everything up to make some cuts. The shelf we are building is 62 inches long, so it exceeds the standard capacity of the ACS table track. But you can also purchase 62 inch guide tracks along with track connectors to make a massive 124 inch long track section for those long straight rip cuts. I quickly laid out all of my cut lines and got to work cutting everything down. For this project, I moved the workpiece to the track edge to make my cuts. I wanted to see how accurate the saw was with a quick working pace. Once everything was marked up, I set the saw's cut depth and started cutting. I was impressed at how straight and stable the long track was. I supported the workpiece on the opposite edge of the ACS table and it proved to be a great platform to work on. When it came time to cross cut the long piece, I supported the extension with my track horse. After setting up the Versa stops in the table, I also used the Craig inline clamps to hold the long cross cut workpiece securely in place. I cleaned up the factory edge on the board and then cross cut to length. After the cuts were done, I installed the Craig Rip Guides to the track. These adjustable stops allow you to lay out your cuts on narrow work pieces and offer support to the track to keep it stable while cutting. Once the cuts were complete, it was back to cross cutting the back section of the shelf. Again, I installed the inline clamp and cleaned up the factory edge. Because of the amount of weight that would be supported on this bar, I decided to use black pipe. I cut off the threaded ends and then using my grinder, I cleaned up any sharp edges or burrs. To hold the pipe in place, I decided to use angled gussets I laid them out on the end of a piece of scrap and using a square just marked some basic dimensions. I then rotated the square and marked a straight line and this would be the angle of each plate. Again using the ACS I cut that angle line and this gave me my two separate pieces. Taking the first piece that I cut off and laying it back onto the material I traced the back edge, and this would give me my two parts. I put it back into the ACS and made the cross cut. And here I'm just checking to make sure that both pieces are square and straight. Now that I had those two pieces, I could lay the pipe on the back panel and mark its overall length. I accounted for 3 8 inch of engagement on each end for the pipe. And then it was on to some quick pocket holes to hold the top shelf and the back panel together. Once the pocket holes were complete, I needed to drill the pockets for the pipe to fit into. You can use a standard hand drill for this, but I just finished making this drill press table and wanted to try it out. Moving on to the top panel, the customer wanted a nice profiled edge on the top, so I gave them a couple choices of router bits and they chose the Roman OG pattern.
I did a quick mock-up so I could send a picture to the customer for approval. So far so good. On to assembly. I added glue to the top edge of my back panel and then clamped that to my assembly table and then used pocket hole clamps to hold the top shelf in place. I threw in some brad nails to hold everything together so I could go back and add the screws. I put the gusset plate on one end using glue and screws. This would allow me to try my secret hidden feature to hold the pipe in place. I decided I was going to cut a spring down and epoxy that into one end of the gusset plates. This would give me a tension on the bar so I could push it in against the spring and then let it push the bar back into the other side to lock it in place. This is a test and it worked pretty good so I went forward with it. Here I'm just adding five minute epoxy to the hole and putting the, and putting the spring in. This is the next day and I did a test lift and then removal of the bar came back, installed the bar, and did a lift again. For the finish, the customer had some colors in her office that she wanted to match, so we chose some mid-wax finish along with some pre-stained conditioner and a high-performance enamel from Rust-Oleum that was flat black for the pipe. I put a screw in each of my wooden saw horses and supported the pipe across that. That way I could rotate one end while spraying on the finish. I did four coats total on the pipe. And while that was drying, I moved on to the shelf. After applying the pre-stained conditioner, I started with the first coat of stain. I used two different colors of stain for this project and kept working until they matched the colors in my client's office. And after the stain had dried, I put on four coats of polycrylic. I sand it in between coats to get a nice flat smooth finish. Here it is after install. The customer started putting some of her metals on it and it looks great. Uh, she loves the hidden feature of the pipe with the spring and everything looks nice and clean. So overall, happy customer, happy project. I'd like to thank Craig Tools for sponsoring this project. The ACS has proven to be a great tool and great asset in my shop, and I look forward to using it for some more projects.